Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. It is a week before Christmas here on uh, December 2018. Um, this video is going to be about my service change, but also most of all about a torque screwdriver. This is made by Klein. Shows its inch pounds right here. Uh, this tool right here is $325 that I got it for with tax. If you can get it cheaper, good for you. Um, this is not a cheap tool by any means. I've tried the digital wheeler, not to pick on them, on Amazon, the yellow and black handle. It's digital. I've used it three different times within two and a half years, and I've had to return it. I've had such issues with the digital part not working after doing a whole torque house, torque spec on a whole house when I've done a Lumicons. And if you've ever done any of those Lumicon bars, um, boy, you're going to have two to three to four per box, and you have about 200 openings you go through quite a few of torque specs on that within that screwdriver and i've seen like every time i've done a house i've destroyed it uh this one right here comes with different uh bits right here but in a nutshell comes in a case like that and then description of your torque specs okay i would suggest that here's what it's going to sound like as you come in here i better turn that off just like that that tells me I have enough at 15 inch pound. I went ahead and labeled this for my inspector, my torque spec on inch pounds for 15, 20 amp, 30 amp breakers. Doesn't matter if it's single pole, uh, non -A AFCI, AFCI, two pole, doesn't matter. And then right here on a 40 and 50 amp, it's gonna be larger in 60 amp. It's gonna be closer to probably a 25 inch pound. So we're just gonna increase that. It should probably match that chart anyways. And then we'll come up here, turn off the range, and get that to torque. Which it doesn't seem to want to catch on the small square head. So if it does that, keep in mind you probably can just put in one of these guys. Oh, maybe not. That's a little difficult. So that's not a larger square head, so I'm looking for a larger flat head then. That'll do. Yeah, make sure you turn the breaker off. There we go. I don't want to strip it. Yeah, maybe it's a little too much there. We'll back that down just a hair. But again, you got to follow with what... That instructions will tell you on the breaker. There we go. So again, you want to get that to click just right so you know you're getting your torque spec um, correct on this. And our inspectors are checking this. In my panel, I went ahead and labeled 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 all the way down. And my neutrals as well. They asked me to put arc faults in here. It wasn't required by code, but they wanted to upgrade. We went ahead and you'll see that I'll use some two-port right here stabs. I'll also use some Alumicon purples depends if i could reach the bus bar or the breaker and you'll see right here if you'll see use just some general red twist caps for some of my grounds i ran down a number 10 and grabbed two or three number 12s usually two and my grounds right here just shove up and then um, also I'll use a polar s connector or nilsco these are my larger my range my dryer my wall oven my cooktop um, and then most of all I'll bond my number four because it's a 200 amp service. I like to make sure these bars are bonded, though they don't do it manufacture. My inspectors look for that. Ground my screw right here. Again, Siemens, if you watch my videos, I go ahead and put two self-tappers and cut off the back of them because I feel like these plastic pieces are weak. You only have one plastic piece at the top up here that actually has any support to the main breaker. So I go ahead and add just two self-tappers. It's not for grounding. It's just to hold the plastic in. And then right here, my bond bushing, you'll see that right there coming in. It has to be a number four on a 200 amp, and that's in 250, 66. And then my bond bushings, my plastic bushing, and then we bring in our deox. We did bring in copper 2 watt on this. There's a table in the back of the code book in the index. I think it's table 7, if I'm not mistaken. They allow us that chart still. 
And we did have to dig down two foot and get rid of the old GRC conduit and put in a PVC. I do have my box adapter at the bottom. I don't leave it sharp. And I have a coupling. And then I come up and I run my green stripes so my inspector can see, Schedule 80, and my two inch riser pipe right here. Um, I also like to use a little bit of putty in here so I can keep bugs in, in the ambient temperature. I don't know how much the ambient temperature matters, but as much as wasp coming in. I like the bushing, um, my number four for my cold water and my ground rod. I like the bushing that with plastic because I have seen it where the neutral's gone out and it eroded the panel and kept cutting into it, if, especially if it's bare. I just had stranded on the truck, so I went ahead and did stranded coming down. I went ahead and moved this down so I had space because I had to move everything down because the breaker was getting too high. And then I went ahead and put in my inner system bonding bridge bar, grounded these two boxes to there, and I went ahead and did all my fittings. I do also have a Myers hub at the top for some of you that see my videos with the conduit. Make sure if you drill in the top of that panel, you have a Myers hub. That's very important. And then coming in, uh, just if you're using flex, just go ahead and make sure that you have your seals right here done appropriately because they're going to look for that. And I know that we don't include Romex anymore in a conduit, but this stuff's already pre-existing. It's nothing that I've done. That's already something a homeowner did years ago. Um, I did have an issue... Uh, oh, sorry, I want to show you my ground rods here real quick. One rod there. We did lower that below the cement there, try to cover it. They can put more rock and cover it. My second ground rod right here. And that came in for a number four copper to the basement where it was unfinished right there. Um, so, yeah, in an overall scope of what we did, this house is like 45 years old. Very small split bus bar panel. Went ahead and upgraded that and changed that. Went from 150 amp to 200 amp and got our permits and all that. Um, Excel out here allows us to do utilities uh, pot at times. So we just tape off and call them, get a closed loop on that, call in for our inspection. Um, we are in the city of Arvada, which I kind of like the way they work in some ways because they don't play the game, beat the inspector. They said, just finish up, put some jumpers in it, call us and we'll come back and inspect within that 10 days, which is nice. One issue I had in this house was that I was having troubles with my dishwasher disposal tripping each other. If you guys have seen my other videos between 240 volt um, with the house upstairs, I've gotten a lot of criticism on that over the last, I think I did that video almost seven, eight years ago. Um, but it was the same concept. I went in and turned this one on with an arc fault that tripped. Went in and turned this one on that tripped. So that tells me that my neutrals are possibly tied. So I went and put normal breakers in. We'll see if the inspector brings up a stink. If he does, I'll call him and talk to him about it. That The next thing we're going to do is go do aluminum cons like this throughout the house because we have aluminum circuits mixed with copper. And we're going to go through and change all the devices. And Article 406.12, I, I think it is, is uh, or 4D, it talks about if we're going to alter in any way plugs and switches that we have to arc fault anyways. So I went ahead and talked to him about upgrading to arc faults. That way I have all my arc faults in before I touch anything and I know if there's an issue. Again, last thing, don't forget to put your name on the panel so people have any questions, they can call you with a magnet. Uh, we put a date when we install their torque spec for our inspector and then we label everything. Very important that we trace, you trace it out. We trace before this house goes down in power. We like to come the day before, do all our grounding, dig out this GRC right here, cut some conduits, get the panels knocked out a bit and label everything. And so what we do with our old stickers, um, I don't know where that dead front went, but we have our old dead front and we, we label it how we find it and then we put stickers and we put those stickers off and put them in here because 14 doesn't always match up to 14. But once we do, we already have it labeled so in case the inspector does want to see it, how do you do that if your power is off and he's coming before he releases a meter? So in northern Colorado, Fort Collins and Loveland where I work all the time, uh, they basically will not allow us to. So we have to label before we start this process. You should label before anyways, because when you go to trim out and you have no power, how do you know if it's an arc fault or not? So you got to make sure you're having your arc faults put in appropriately as well. Now, otherwise, you're going to be putting an arc fault on a furnace circuit, and you're not going to be doing it on a kitchen circuit where you need to. Um, so anyways, guys, hopefully it'll help you out. Uh, again, that torque spec, this is what the video is about, that torque spec screwdriver. Uh, make sure you're doing that. Um, we do that on all our all of our service changes. All right, thanks guys and have a Merry Christmas.